And you're forced into one change. Yep. And maybe one unskilled position. Do you think you know what the line you've got answers yet? Uh, yeah, we'll make we'll make one change probably and the only one. But uh, if as long as we get through tomorrow night, okay. I mean, it's a pretty simple um, replacement, like for like in lots of ways. Like he unfortunately hurts himself, and Ryan Ryan's ready to play. So you know, he went back and played just over half because we knew we had to play Thursday night. So we managed that well. And he found the fit of the footy and played the way we like him to play. So pretty comfortable with the with the ins and outs. So you comfortable to run sit again? What did you? Trying to do last week, but yeah, I think with every young player you develop, you're trying to give them as much time as you can to help them get through the to the next stage of their career. And we've seen great examples a long way through with a lot of our younger players. That it, it's it's worthwhile hanging in there. And Josh, I think um, we'll learn a lot from last week. The obvious question now is for Tom Jones. Yeah, Tom's fine. Tom's fine. Again, the commentary around Tom, I get, and he's the captain of the club, but. He knows exactly where he's at and he knows exactly what the team's doing. He's quite proud of the team, if I'm being honest, about the way he's talking and uh, the fact that he's um, leading a club that's doing really well at both levels of football at the moment. And he's playing a significant part in that, albeit he's not in his preferred position, and that is playing in the AFL team. Did you contemplate bringing him back then? Uh, not this week, no. No, we didn't to a, to a point because we didn't. We think the team's playing really well with the balance that we have. And we think that's um, been important for us. So, you know, Tom knows exactly where he sits and what he needs to continue to do. And, look, he played really, really well in the sample last week. If anyone in the room seen the sample last week, Tom was our best player. So he's playing really well. Or how does he get back into the team? If it's Burton this week for an injured player, how does... Tom just needs to continually play the way he's been playing and um, wait for an opportunity to, to uh, present or take. And that's like every player at our club. There's... There's a, there's a volume of work that will force you in and then there's an opportunity that comes from outside your control. So I, that's all I can say. He's putting together a volume of work that will hopefully force him in or he's waiting for an opportunity that came for Ryan this week. You're sticking to the same stuff. You're sticking to Riley and stuff. <laughs> Chris doesn't tell me too much, but, yeah, we probably will be. How close was Marcus? Uh, uh, yeah, really close, and particularly because you know, I come up against Geelong and it's his, it's his old team. It, you can sort of half understand why you, you would consider that, you know, and he's pretty desperate for a second chance. Um, but he's got a lot to learn about the way we play, and I think it, you know, if we did do it with Deke, it doesn't mean we, we wouldn't do it in a hurry, but we, we're giving him a bit more time to, to go. But if he plays like he did again last week, he's going to be hard to keep out. How would you use him, Ken? Where do you think he's going to fit? Oh, well, again, we're exploring that a little bit more. I mean, he's clearly been able to play inside mid, so he's, he's got that flexibility, and he kicks a goal, so... You would, you would assume you can play front half football somewhere and, and add to your team. Um, we've built our team pretty strongly in the front half around pressure. I think he's certainly okay at that as well. You know, you've got six foot and you're around six foot and weight and you're on the bike. How do you feel about that? that I have no issue with it at all other than that you know the draw and you've got to get on with it because it's a difficult draw. I said this last week, it's a difficult draw to put in place and we just got to uh, take up what we have to take up and whatever that challenge looks like, we're okay. So if you get No, we've managed our squad through the last two or three weeks based on we've had three six-day breaks in a row. So I think the good thing about that is that it's not got shorter. It's just been pretty consistent with what the week looks like and we've put the right amount of training in, we hope. And you know, cl clearly we're playing like it. We're getting it right most of the time. But um, hopefully we can get another win tomorrow night and that will give the boys an opportunity to have a bit of a rest. We all know you never win. What does win win with your appetite like after 10 wins in a row? What, yeah. where, does that, where does that sit with it? You're watching them. I think that's pretty clear that they're, they're, they're enjoying what they're doing at the moment and we've got a lot to continue to work on. I think that's what I like about the most. We've you know, got a lot of young people who are learning a lot more about their game and they're working really hard to improve their game. Um, they're really good at resetting and I think we're really good at resetting. We don't, I said last week, whether we've won eight in a row, nine in a row or now it's ten, we don't, we don't spend too much time on ten in a row. We spend a lot of time on the opposition, the high quality of the opposition. We come up against you know, the reigning champs who have got their best team back together, you know, um, it's, it's got to be a real challenge. You say they're still working on things, but what can they find more in their game at the moment? Oh, we have, we've had our challenges with players not being available too and bringing the team together. The cohesion can certainly continue to grow. I think that's certainly important for us. There's a different feel around, around our midfield that we've, and they're still, still learning what they do. We've got quite a different feel about our back half. So there's lots of things that can still get better. I hope. At what point do you sort of prepare
prepare the group to, to play September football? Is it that was the other thing as well. When you were able to get home and rest before the fight, is this almost a, an extended dress rehearsal for finals? No, we, we started preparing for that pre-season. That's what we do every season. So that start of the year, we set out at start of every year to, to try and qualify to play finals. And then we set out, to as that goes, to qualify as high as we can. Currently, we're still trying to qualify. So we're going to do everything we can and stay focused on that. And at the end of round 24, it is this year. See where we are. In terms of the process, though, and the way you'd like to play, are you seeing, I mean, clearly you must be seeing signs that what you're doing can match it with New Arena. And once you start to sort of promote it, it's just good. Yeah, well... It's, it's interesting one because we keep every challenge seems to keep getting bigger and that's that's okay but that's what we've have to do we we ex accept that we weren't that team last year and everyone wants to con continually see us show that we can be that team again this year and we want to see that ourselves cats have um, come off some good form had a rest and getting three or four players back no, i'm sure we're meeting them at their, i always expect their best is such a great footy club and then what they did last year was rem was, uh, was amazing, and um, I'm under no il illusion as to, and neither is the team of what's coming and what's hitting hitting Adelaide Oval tomorrow night. We know what's coming. They're they're at a stage of their season. They're starting to get some momentum, I think, and you know they've beaten the Bulldogs last game. They bring in three really high quality players, at least I imagine, at least three that they'll bring in. Um, fresh, going to be a challenge. Yeah, it was. Well, he's that one of those young players that we just talked about at the start, Josh, and uh, you, you see them grow and you see them get better and that run of confidence really helps. And then they get on their way, I think, more often than not. Lockie was, I think, right in the middle of that, that patch of form that was going to help create significant belief in himself and in his own game. So um, it, it's hopefully only a short-term-ish injury, albeit it's a cracked jaw. It's going to heal pretty quick and it won't worry him as far as the way he plays his football when he gets back at it, but... It's a bit disappointing for him, but ultimately, um, that's injuries that happen in footing. We know they come. Biggest. Oh no, it's, it's just really consistent. I think that's the biggest, the biggest change in Zach. Zach's always had some great traits that a lot of people love to watch and see. Um, we've always been able to see them, but I think they've been enormously, remarkably consistent for the last ten weeks. Can Adam and with a lot of trouble. With a lot of trouble, but that's just—I mean—that's that's the challenge that they get. But every week you get those challenges. I mean, Tom's an all-time great. Jeremy's going to be an all-time great himself. I mean, so they're they're the best one to probably group in the competition. I would imagine at their absolute best. So it's a real challenge. But collectively, they need team support, and that's what will always happen. Um, you know the. They're a challenge, but the team supporting the team the most will be the one that can get on top. Sorry. Who takes which key forward from Joel? Uh, my, we are. Yep. Fits for them which one they take. Yeah, they're both really experienced players, and I think they they know what their strengths are, and, and we know what their strengths are. But it's it's again a collection of people down there that um, you know they'll never ultimately I don't think they'll ever be exactly on one-on-one -on -one the whole way. It'll be always a bit different. It's Chris in this room. <laughs> I don't know. Wayne Sears has just said, but it'll be a collection of our defence that plays against their offence, which is incredibly strong. So, as I said, they've got their... Looks like, to me, they've got something close to their best seven or eight forwards available for them at this for the first time for the year, maybe. I know a lot's been said about your future, not to sort of go over old ground before, but do you, do you ever give thought to what winning a final, what winning two finals might mean for you personally and for the future of the football? No, nah, not for me, not, not at all for me, because I've, I've been really clear and the club's been really clear about that, so we don't need to go over that ground, but the reality is we want to win as many finals as we can as a football club. We've set out at the start of the year to, to ultimately try and win the premiership like every club in the competition does. We know that there's only one team that does it, unfortunately, and we've just got to keep in the fight and... You know you've got to win more than one to actually win it, so we're going to try hard again. And then it's just come what may after that for you personally? Yeah, that's been pretty clear all the way through. I'm sure Olivia Brownlow felt that he is a bet. Is Zach an eye on the ground? No, again, they're, they're, they're conversation. I, I, I appreciate you asked the question, but individually we're not going to try and highlight to me. But there's enough commentary around um, Zach, Connor, 
our younger midfielders and what they were able to do. They're, they're questions that I really can't answer. I can speculate. So, yeah, he's had a really strong season thus far, but there's still another, what is it, 10 games to go or something. So there's still a lot to play out. But he's having a strong season. No, I was really, really happy for him. I was really proud of him and happy for him because he's had his challenges this year and, you know, he's, he's had to um, get himself a bit sharper with what he's been able to do. And he's a competitive big hooer, so you know he's going to hang in there. So that's what I really love about him and that's what he's um, brought to work in the last month particularly. We need him to do it for a fair bit longer yet though, so it's pretty important for us. What else did you need to get him right? Uh, just a bit of form. He just needed a little bit of form and feel. I mean, at the point when we when we uh, we made the decision to leave him out of the team, it was purely mate, just go back and enjoy having a game of footy again. Because at this level, these blokes get an enormous amount of pressure every week, and they want to play well every week. And when it gets to a point where it's a run of poor form, sometimes you're just better off to break the the pressure. Yeah, he was really good, but again, he's, it's, it's a start. We, we want to see a consistent performance, and I thought he showed last week that he's still got an incredible amount of AFL left in him. Uh, about a week away, I think, after the bye. I'd, I'd be surprised if he's not playing some football the week post the bye.